What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today will be the second of my ski resort review video series. Today I'm going to be talking about Alta. I just got back from a trip to Alton Snowbird. First of all, two of my favorites, Alton Snowbird. I mean the cottonwoods, the terrain, the snowfall. We'll get into all that, but wanted to start off by saying two of my favorite resorts. I've been a handful of times going to be focusing on Alta in this video, the terrain, the snow, the layout of the lifts, all of that stuff. So let's get into it. So I've been to Alta a handful of times now, and I can confidently say that it's definitely got some of the steepest terrain you can find. And not even just talking about the upper mountain. From top to bottom, they've got steeps, they've got moguls, trees, bulls, you name it. It's really an expert's mountain. It's not a place where I would recommend bringing the family. Yes, they have beginner terrain, like pretty much every resort does, but it's really catered to those expert skiers. Let's start off at the main sort of base area, the Wildcat base. Now this is where the main parking lot is. You've got two lifts off this, off this base area, the Collins lift, which is a high speed quad and Wildcat. Now Wildcat, not usually much action going on there. They, there's a lot of good terrain off this lift. I've skied it a handful of times myself, but everybody tends to take the Collins lift. You get a bit more vertical. You can access most of the mountain from there. It's just more convenient. Now I will say this, one of my gripes with Alta is the Collins lift is a bit of a choke point. There is no gondola, there's no tram like there is next door at Snowbird. It's a high speed quad. That's the main lift out of the base area. You kind of got to work with that. So that is a bit of a downside. The lines can get pretty lengthy. The Collins lift does have a mid station, which is sort of halfway up. So what you can do is instead of coming all the way down to the base, you can get on at the mid station. They leave every 10th chair open after 11 a.m. You can get on at the mid station and go uh, to the top of, of the Collins lift. That is an option. It's nice later in the day uh, when you don't really need to ski all the way down to the base. You can just hop on at the mid station, get a quicker lap in that way. But again, I do feel like I have to mention the crowds at Collins can be pretty bad. There is one way around that. I don't even know if it's a way around it, but there's a tow rope that connects the two base areas. So the Wildcat base we just talked about, the Albion base is on the other side and there's a transfer tow rope that connects the two. Now the Albion base has a six pack. It's called Sunnyside. It was installed, I think just a couple years ago. This is, if there is a beginner area, it's definitely there. That's where you're gonna find most of the beginners. Now the benefit, of the uh, Sunnyside lift is that you can get to Sugarloaf and Supreme, two of the upper mountain lifts, uh, from there pretty easily. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily go via Collins. You can take the six pack. I'm not going to say it's going to be totally less crowded because there are some beginners and intermediates you're going to find there, but it is another way to get up the mountain. So you don't necessarily have to take the Collins lift, although most of your experts, and I would say most of the people at Alta in general, they're going to start their day uh, at Collins making their way up from there. Now the lower mountain terrain at Alta, like I mentioned earlier, is pretty fantastic. They've got a ton of tree runs, moguls, even bowls in the lower mountain terrain. I mean, ballroom is a run I skied uh, or sort of traversed over that way. That's an excellent zone. It's only a blue, but it's a wide open bowl and you can keep going. You can ski some blacks, some shoots over there on uh, Baldy Shoulder is the name of that terrain. And then you look at the Wildcat lift as well, ton of bump runs, ton of tree runs off there that bring you right to the base. So you can ski a really, you know, really steep terrain from top to bottom at Alta. And you really can't say that for, uh, you know, a ton of resorts. It's just, like I said, it is an expert mountain. It's probably one of the hardest mountains I've ever skied. And I view that as a positive. I like to ski that sort of terrain. So if you're into that, Alta is the place for you. If you're bringing a family, I think there are better options out there, and there are better options in Utah as well. But, you know, you can find some blues and greens at Alta, but it's not really who it's meant for. It, it is meant for the expert skier. Let's talk about some of the other terrain at Alta. Moving into sort of the upper mountain, if you will, you've got two lifts, Sugarloaf and Supreme. Sugarloaf sees a bit more traffic. It gets you a bit more terrain. Uh, but both have, have their advantages, and again, the theme of this video, I'm going to be saying a lot, there's great terrain all over the mountain. That's the beauty of Alta. It's the beauty of Snowbird as well, which we'll get to in another video. I wanted to focus on Alta today. 
and, uh, and the terrain and the snow that they see there. So Sugarloaf, uh, you can get to it from Collins or you can get to it uh, from Sunnyside. Two different ways to, to get up there. You're getting, you're getting around 10,000 feet up, up Sugarloaf. And where you're finding off there is, is a ton of terrain. Uh, you can actually get the Snowbird from the top of Sugarloaf, which is, a, which is cool. I also want to touch on Devil's Castle, which is a run that I ski for the first time this year. It's more of a zone than a run. Uh, great, great piece of terrain they have there. They opened it uh, midweek. The snow wasn't that great when we were in Alta, which you'll see from some other videos. Um, I've had great snow at Alta before. We'll get to that. So the Devil's Castle zone is, and again, one of those traverses. You actually have to sidestep up. It's not really a boot pack, or at least not early in the season when the, or, you know, when I was there when the snow was too soft. So you had to do some side slipping up, traversing across. Again, common theme with Alta, a lot of traversing. I like it, but some others might not. And then it brings you into this open bowl area that uh, when we were there, there was not, not any fresh snow, but they opened this place. Again, stays in the shade. The snow was fantastic. So Devil's Castle... If you like to traverse and hike up a little bit, I recommend it. Uh, you can even keep going and going and going all the way to Castle Apron, which is even more uh, untouched a lot of the time. So, again, you can kind of create your own destiny at Alta, which I personally like. You can keep traversing. You can find good snow, even on a day or a week uh, when we were there where there really wasn't any good snow. They opened up Devil's Castle. It stayed cold. It stayed in the shade. The snow was fantastic. So that's definitely a highlight of uh, the terrain off of Sugarloaf. But even in, you know, sort of under the lift, there's great terrain. Yes, it gets more mogled out, but uh, I think Challenger, Extrovert, some runs that, that I remember off the top of my head. Really, really good stuff. Open, steep, bumped up. Uh, there, there's just a lot to work with off of the Sugarloaf lift alone. Uh, and we haven't even get, got to su Supreme yet. So, so yeah, really good stuff off of Sugarloaf. We probably spent the most of our time there just because the snow was slightly better than other areas. And, you know, it was pretty much all open. And then Devil's Castle opened, so we did a lot there. So Sugarloaf, maybe a bit more crowded than the other lift, which we'll get to. But definitely worth a visit. You're going to be spending a lot of time there if you, if you visit Alta. Uh, it's got great terrain, and it's got access to Snowbird. So moving on to Supreme, another, uh, pretty much the other upper mountain lift. There's not many lifts at Alta. It feels smaller uh, than Snowbird if you're comparing the two, but the, when you look at the trail count, it is pretty similar. So once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to get around. It might feel a little overwhelming at first. Do I dip into this bowl? Where's that going to put me? But I would say overall, once you get the hang of things, it's pretty easy to get around and you kind of know where you're going to funnel down to, uh, you know, once you spend a day or two there. So I think that's good. I think it's, it's, it's pretty easy to navigate. So the Supreme Lift brings you to uh, a couple different areas. Catherine's area, which I didn't ski this year, but I skied it last year. Um, another boot pack sort of area. And again, if you don't like boot packing, traversing, not sure Alta is, is your spot. If you do, you're gonna love this place because there's so many options to just boot pack, traverse, and, and find good snow. And Catherine's is one of those. It's, uh, you know, you, you come up the Supreme Lift, it's a really quick boot pack. It's not a big hike at all. And you can oh find some good snow God. in there. We found some, some powder uh, last year, the day after a storm. And it's not that hard to get out of. It, it spits you right yeah. out where you'd want it to. Um, really, really good zone there. Again, trees, uh, steeps, sort of just all of the above uh, in terms of expert terrain there in the Catherine's area. So I recommend it if you're if you're up for a quick quick boot pack and a traverse uh, and for some good snow in the trees. I would recommend Catherine's. The other side of Supreme does have a few groomers that that we skied, which. Um, you know, they were in decent shape, a little icy, a little slick here and there, but, you know, on a, on a good snow week, uh, there's, there's certainly groomers to ski at Alta. You won't be just skiing bumps and steeps the whole time. You can find a groomer. Um, so, so they do have some blue runs. Don't panic if you're, if you're not, you know, into pushing yourself from nine to four. I, I get it. You can, you can definitely find some blues up Supreme. Uh, and you can find some more tree runs uh, not in the Catherine's area as well. There's, there's a few just sort of fall line, open tree runs, also tighter tree runs that you can, you can pick your way through off of, off of one of the blues. So yeah, Supreme, not quite as much terrain as Sugarloaf. Um, but again, if you want to find some good snow, Catherine's is a good option uh, for those who are up for a boot pack. So Supreme, probably the secondary lift in terms of upper mountain. I think Sugarloaf definitely just has a bit more. 
But uh, you can find great terrain off Supreme. And like I said, I've said it a million times, anywhere you go at all times, if you stay lower mountain all day, you're going to find great terrain. You can also access the Greeley area, which is sort of a steep bowl-like face that you can just traverse as far as you want across and sort of drop in whenever. That's pretty common at Alta. If you're not a traverser, I wouldn't recommend going because to get to the best snow, to get to some of the best runs, you have to traverse. You don't necessarily have to hike, although there's a lot of boot packing if you're into that. Um, but there is a lot of traversing to around Alta. You look at the High Traverse, which is off Collins, which brings you some of uh, Alta's best runs. I mean, Alf's High Rustler, I skied that. Super steep, long fall line run. You can see it uh, from the bottom. There's a lot of runs off the High Traverse. There's a lot of skiing off the Greeley Traverse. So again, if you're not into you know, traversing, you're gonna find Alta a little frustrating because that's kind of what it's all about. You hop on a Traverse and you sort of pick your way down. And, and there's not a ton of signage, I will say. Um, but that, that's kind of not the point. That's almost the charm of it is you just, you just sort of pick your way down. You find your own line, what looks good. And uh, the traverses are, you know, provide, provide access to that sort of skiing. Steep, open terrain. You'll find a lot of that off these places, like the Greeley face. Uh, you'll also find some tree runs, for sure. They definitely have their fair share of those, their fair share of bumps. I would say the, the general thing that I found is the more you traverse, the less tracked out it'll be. That kind of makes sense. For me, That I, I love that kind of stuff. I love just being able to find more untracked snow and being able to sort of, you know, almost create your own destiny, right? You're not really limited to just the moguls oh, uh, that are that are more accessible. You can just keep going and going and find more more untracked stuff. So you've got this Greeley face that's sort of between Sugarloaf and Collins. You can get to it from both of those lifts, I believe. Uh, again, steep, open terrain. Some sees the sun, some sees the shade. You'll find different sorts of snow off there. So the only real terrain I feel like I haven't skied at Alta has been the Baldy Chutes. They haven't been open any time I've been there, so I haven't got a chance to hike up there. It's a big hike, I think. I think it might take you an hour. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but if you're looking for like a steep, cool R chute, they've got it. They really do. It, I mean, I looked at some of these chutes from the lift, and I was impressed that that was even in bounds. I mean, it's... It's really impressive, the terrain that they have there, I have to say. So, Baldy Shoots haven't been there yet. We'll get to it. Wanted to touch on it quickly in this video because I've seen some videos and it does look pretty intense um, in a good way. So, you know, if you're looking for one of those massive boot packs and a, and a really steep shoot, they've, they've got that at well. They really just tick all the boxes. Let's touch on the snow now. I think personally, the Cottonwood Canyons in Utah carry the best snow in the United States. And I don't know why that is. I don't know the science behind it, but because I've flown into Salt Lake uh, plenty of times and there's been no snow, you go up into the canyons and it's, a, it's just a totally different environment. They have their own microclimate up there and Alton Snowbird, especially in Little Cottonwood, they just see an absurd amount of snow. I mean, look at last year, I was there in March. I think Alta ended up with 900 inches. They do get a little bit more than Snowbird, which is strange. Um, so if you're if you're a stickler, then then yeah, Alta probably will have better cover. We experienced that um, this past week in in early January, late December. There was more cover at Alta. Um, don't know why that is, but that that definitely was it, I, that was what we experienced. It, it definitely felt like they had a bit more snow. So, um, but anyway. The snow there is just incredible. I mean, I've skied it on bad days. I've skied it on good days. The powder, it's as about as light as you can find, uh, and they just see so much of it. Um, even this year, on a down year, quote unquote, they've got more than anyone in the U.S. bar Alaska. You know, so I mean, if you're booking a trip in advance, like most people do, and you want good snow, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's guaranteed because it never is. But Utah and the Cottonwoods tend to see more than everyone else. I mean, that's Woo! just a fact. Look at the data. Jackson Hole, maybe you could throw in there as well. But, I mean, it's just, it, it's kind of a fact. I mean, they just see more snow on average than, than most. So, if that's important to you, then, yeah, you're, you're going you're gonna to love 
uh, what you see if you hit it on a good day at, or a good week at, at Alta. I mean, it's just it's it's pretty phenomenal. The the quality of the snow, the quality of the terrain, which I've already touched on, and and the levels of snow. I mean, it really just ticks a lot of boxes. It's it's if not my favorite, it's one of my favorites. I think Alta and Snowbird are probably my my top two. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't have many bad things to say about Alta, bar the, the, you know, the choke point at the Collins lift. They're seeing more crowds in this day and age, the Cottonwoods, unfortunately. Um, and a quad as your main sort of way up the mountain. It's not ideal, in my opinion. I, I think you, you, you'd want to see that as a six-pack just to get people up quicker. I mean, the lines can get pretty long. Um other than that, I really don't have many complaints. The terrain is fantastic from top to bottom. I mean, even off that little two for Wildcat, if you don't want to wait in the line, get on Wildcat. You'll, you'll, you'll find good stuff. Like, you can find good stuff wherever you are on this mountain. Um, you don't need to be high up. You can be right at the bottom, and, and you could fill your boots all day. So it's fantastic. It really is. I, I, I love it. It's, it's one of my favorites. Um, I've been like three out of the last four or five years now. I mean, it's just, it's so hard not to go back. It's its pretty easy to get to for me. Uh, the terrain's great, the snow's great. Even this week we had a blast and the snow wasn't that great. Devil's Castle kind of saved us when they opened that. Um, it's its a great place to be. I will say the canyon um, can be tricky uh, in terms of when it snows because they do close that road a lot for avalanche work. So just be, be wary of that. I've gotten, um, stranded not stranded but we've had to post up uh in sandy outside of the the canyon just because they've they've closed the road um so be mindful of that if, if you make your way up to altar or snowbird or solitude in brighton for that matter because the canyons uh are, are prone to road closures so fair warning um but again struggling to find many negatives with with alta it's just uh, it's just fantastic. Again, one of my favorites. So hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down in the comments below. Happy to answer any. Happy to, um, you know, shed some light on some unanswered questions you might have. But hopefully I touched on everything in this video. And uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good day.